Let's design a cookie cutter together today. My name is Nancy Westfall. I'm the artist behind the Colorful Cookie and the Colorful Cookie Club. I love to teach people how to design and cut cookie and cake stencils using their Silhouette Cameo and Silhouette Studio software and also the Cricut Machines and the Cricut Design Space software. I have a Silhouette Alta and I'm going to show you today how to design a cookie cutter in Silhouette Studio, save that file, upload it into the Silhouette 3D software and print that cutter on the Silhouette Alta. The stencil you see on this cookie can be found in my So Fancy shop. It is a two-part stencil. Let's talk for just a minute about the parts of a cookie cutter. You can see two different designs here. This design is made up of a handle and a cutting edge. And here are the shapes that make up this cutter. This cookie cutter is made up of a handle, a support wall, and a cutting edge. And here are the shapes that make up the design of this cutter. Before we begin, we need to come up here to the Edit tab, and we are going to click on Preferences. We are going to be working in millimeters, so if your unit of measurement is not in millimeters, change that right here by clicking on this toggle, and choose Millimeters, click Apply, and OK. Now this cookie cutter I want to make at about somewhere around 3 inches. So I am going to click right here on the drawing tools and I'm going to select draw a rounded rectangle. I'll click there and I'm going to click and drag here to make a nice size rectangle. I think that's a good size. Now you can see these two dots. That means that this shape is not converted to a path. So I can right click on this shape and then click convert to path and we are ready to design. The first offset that we are going to be making is going to be for the handle. So I'm going to come right over here and click on the star, and that will bring up the offset panel. I'm going to move it right here where you can see it. I am going to click on offset with this shape selected, and remember I said we are designing the handle first. The distance is going to be 6 millimeters. Enter 6 and click Apply. We are going to click and drag over both of these, and I'm going to duplicate those by pushing Command and the left arrow. Then I'm going to make these two shapes a compound path. They are both still selected. Command E. Let's fill those with a color. I'm going to make them blue, and I'll make the lines blue. So this is going to be our handle. I'll type that out right here. Now, we want to always work from this original inner shape. So this outer shape, I'm going to delete. I don't need that. So now let's create our offset for the support wall. So click Offset again. The, uh, the offset for the support wall is going to be 1.2. Hit Apply. Click and drag. We're going to duplicate it again. I'm going to push Command and the left arrow on my keyboard, and that's Control left arrow if you're on a PC. With both of these selected, I'm going to make them a compound path. And let's turn that one red. The lines are already red, so this is going to be our support wall. So we'll just call that support. Now. Remember what I said, we have to grab that inner line. We don't want the outer line, we want the inner line. So I'm going to grab that. And if you're confused about which one is smaller, because when you're zoomed out, it's hard to tell, click on it and make sure that you have the smaller one and delete the, original, the offset from that wall. Let me zoom back out so you can see. We're gonna delete the bigger one here. Remember, we're always working from this original shape. Now let's, offset for the cutting edge. Click offset again. The cutting edge is going to be 0.8. Apply. Click and drag and we're just going to simply make this one a compound path because we're finished using that inner shape as the offset. We're done offsetting. So we're going to make this one yellow and that way you'll be able to see the difference in each one of these. 
We're done with the offset window. So now I'm going to bring these back over here. Um, and, and I didn't label this one, that, but this one is the edge. Maybe I should do that for you, edge. Okay. So we'll just keep these over here so you can see the difference as you're working through this tutorial. And I'll duplicate these and we'll go ahead and build the cutter. Okay, I'm going to select the handle. I'll hold down shift. I'll select the support wall and the edge. And I'm going to push command and the right arrow. Scoot these over here. Let's center these up. And we need to make sure that the handle is on the back layer. Now, right now, I can't see the edge. It's, it's underneath this red support wall and that can't that won't work we need to make sure the handle is on the back so we're going to send the handle to the back we are going to select the red support wall and we are going to uh, send it backward and now you can see let me click and drag or click zoom in here where you can see you have the handle you have the red support wall and the yellow cutting edge. You want the yellow cutting edge on the top layer and if you're not sure about that you can select bring to front right here and also if you want to check that you can do this. You can see that the blue is behind the red. You can see that the yellow is on top of the red. So that's what we want that yellow or that red sandwiched in between. Let's center these back up again and now we don't need to do anything else. You don't need to group them this shape is ready to save to our library, so I'm going to click and drag over it. Save selection. Save to library. And I have a folder called Cutter Designs, and that's where I'm going to save this as a Studio 3 file. Click OK. Now we need to open the Silhouette 3D software. Once you have the Silhouette Studio software open, you need to go to your library. Your library may be closed, you just click on this arrow to open it. Go to the folder where you saved your cookie cutter design and double click on it. We are going to choose extrusion, not the cookie cutter option. We are going to be extruding and building this cutter from our own design. So click extrusion. This cutter will come in and you will see the three parts that we designed. Let me try to turn this up a little bit here so you can see it. Here is the handle, here is the support wall, and the cutting edge. Now we have to extrude them and build them Whoops, upward. So the first thing we need to do is ungroup them. You can use your shortcuts for ungrouping, shift command G or shift control G, and now you can see each has their own bounding box. So I'm just going to click out here. I'm going to come back in and select the cutting edge first, and I can tell that that is what's selected right here. We're going to make that 17. You could make this 18 if you wanted to. Um, you'll learn your what you like and your own preference, but for, for me this works. So I'll select now the support wall and I'm going to make that 15. Enter. And then I'm going to select the handle and I'm going to make it 3. Enter. Now let me turn this back to the top so that you can see what it looks like. Flip it all around here for you. Now we need to select everything. You can do that by clicking and dragging over all of it, or you can push Command A to select all. We are going to make sure that everything is level to the bed by clicking right here. And then I'm going to click Command or push Command G for the grouping shortcut on my keyboard to group it all together. And now it's ready to print. Click 3D print at the top. There's our cutter sliced and ready to print. If you want to watch it print, I'm, I'm just using my uh, the roller on your, your mouse or you can move two fingers up and down on your trackpad. Click here to see your cutter being printed virtually. 
and you can slow this down or you can speed it up all the way to 200 times. You can see quality here. You can choose standard, draft, high quality. Um, there's all kinds of options here. This is in the newest update for the software. I have used high quality and I have also used standard. But for this one, when I choose high quality with this most recent update, it's, an, it's almost a four hour print, which is way too long for me. So I'm just going to go with standard this time and see how it turns out. So once you have your Alto ready to print, you know that your bed is level, you have your filament loaded, you click print. And here's the completed cookie cutter. For more helpful tips, follow The Colorful Cookie on Facebook. And sign up for the newsletter at thecolorfulcookie.com.